are needed to solve the biggest challenges right now. Governor Kemp is hoping to solve the limited access to COVID vaccinations in Georgia by expanding who is allowed to administer the vaccine. This executive order allows registered professional nurses who have a license that expired in the last five years to apply for a temporary permit to administer the vaccine. It also allows them to administer the shot while being supervised remotely. That also extends to medical assistants. Governor Kemp also signed an executive order before this one allowing dentists, pharmacists, EMTs, and others to administer the vaccine. The University of Georgia is now offering a saliva-based COVID-19 test. Uh, senior living facilities all over the city of Atlanta, such as uh, this one over here. And the one I live in up the street, all over the place. Why can't they come to us and give us vaccinations? Why are we left to deal with it? Phones being busy. Unable to get appointments because there's no vaccine available. Websites crashing. Why do we have to deal with all of that? I mean, no seniors, but just because we don't have granny nannies, they won't do it. Come on, Georgia Health Department, Fulton County Health Department, what is your problem? range can be the most dangerous to himself and to others. Just put it on the floor, my man. It's not that bad. A volatile incident unfolded with innocent airport passengers nearby. A man who was told he could not smoke had an irrational response, pulling a knife. I have a black man with a knife. That's Atlanta officer Peter Diaz who spoke to him calmly. He got help to the terminal. And with a taser, one officer brought the man to the ground safely and kept bystanders safe. How might police avoid using the most lethal force when they come upon someone with little or no information about them, someone who is disturbed and may have something that could be a weapon? Councilman Antonio Brown believes creating a new Department of Public Safety will help advisors at the ready to come out could be one answer. To rebuild the trust between policing and community while being a bridge to safety uh, for our city's most vulnerable population. Vulnerable? A different individual, his face obscured, was upset about something. He broke a large bottle and began cutting himself. This incident also at the airport had already gone bad when police got there. On the ground. Brown and members of council who back him believe a new public safety department could give police help trying to handle emergencies that are not outright law-breaking. Where is the mayor on the idea? I don't believe that another department creation is necessary, but I will, um, with an open mind, look at the feedback that's received once a feasibility study is done. Among the mayor's concerns, the cost that would be involved in creating a whole new department. Well, for now, the council approved doing a study. After 120 days, they'll come back with the specifics. Likely candidacy for mayor of Atlanta. She would face Mayor Bottoms, who has had to deal with the pandemic, its impact on health and businesses, as well as some alleged police misconduct and the unrest that resulted last spring and summer. But perhaps even more than all that, Bottoms has struggled with a spike in homicides and aggravated assaults in the city of Atlanta. Because of that, business owner Chris Rich says he will back Felicia Moore if she runs. She would go in with that as a top focus and figure out how to unite the city uh, and improve police relations as well with the people on how to tackle the situation. Bottoms talked about the crime problem last week. It's something that I continue to focus on and take very seriously, not for purposes of re-election, but because this is my city, and this is the city that I'm raising my family in. 
it's anywhere between you know a half a dozen to a dozen shots fired. Another Bucket shooting Sunday morning leaves the main dead and police searching for whoever's responsible. While they're in the turning lane, another vehicle pulls alongside them and shoots multiple times into the driver's car. The shooting happened just after 2.30 Sunday morning. Atlanta police say the driver who was originally on Sydney Market Boulevard turned into the plaza to seek help. He lost control and crashed into the tree. The man was taken to the hospital where he later died. A friend sent me this picture and says Benjamin, also known as Benzo, was the man killed. Another friend told me he wasn't from the Atlanta area. He was from Ohio and was in town celebrating a birthday. Police say a woman was also in the car but wasn't hit by gunfire. She was treated for minor injuries related to the crash. It, it does make it kind of uneasy to walk down the street, you know, on a regular basis because I walk to and from work and, you know, like I never really know what's going on and what's, what's going to happen. Our Darius Rayner lives nearby and came to the scene after he heard what happened. Like, I've had my own experience of somebody pulling a pistol on me. Crime is no stranger to the Buckhead community. The increase in violence has residents pushing city leaders to install more security cameras and increase police patrol as police continue to search for answers. Fed up neighbors want those responsible to be caught. It's really would still need to join them and break ranks to get a conviction. Christina Coleman, Fox 5 News. As President Biden enters his first full week in office, he is expected to take action on several issues, including the environment, immigration, and the economy. Now, the White House says it's also heavily focused on the pandemic and the economy. The new White House Chief of Staff is among those urging lawmakers to pass a new $1.9 trillion economic aid package. Many of Republicans are concerned with the price tag. Total figure is is pretty uh, uh, shocking, if you will, and uh, the idea that we need a stimulus is a little hard to understand because I, I'm one of those that's convinced that if you want to see this economy get going, we got to get beyond COVID. President's defense will spend, have a period of time to draft their legal briefs. Next month's trial will be historic. No president has been impeached twice. Or Go. Senate leaders have agreed to start the trial the week of February 8th. Before then, they'll work to confirm President Biden's cabinet nominees and advance a COVID relief bill. If all Senate Democrats vote to convict Trump, 17 Republicans would still need to join them and break ranks to get a conviction. Christina Coleman, Fox 5 News. Now let's play hardball. Tonight at 10, our senior IT reporter Dale Russell details how the case unfolded and sits down with Representative Maynard as she responds to what she calls alarming threats. I'm Morris Diggs, you promised, and still find yourself without a paycheck. Your employer has a has very wide latitude um, to fire you for virtually any reason. It depends on what you do and what state you're in, but there are reasons why, in most cases, your boss can terminate you for taking part in a protest, even when you stay within the law. Most Americans are at-will employees, meaning they can leave their job whenever they want. As long as it has nothing to do with issues like race or religion, your boss can walk away from you just as easily. You could wear red shoes and say, say hey, I don't like the fact you wear red shoes, you're fired. That's fine if you're an at-will employee. The First Amendment means the government can't silence your protest. It doesn't mean your boss can't object. Joseph Watson is a graduate of Harvard Law School and a professor of public affairs at the University of Georgia. He says some states, like California and New York, have laws protecting employees who want to take part in a protest. But even in those states, you have to do it on your own time. Um, the protests you participate in have to be lawful. Government and union employees have some added protection. They may still be able to fire them, but it's going to take more time. You could always check with your boss before taking part in a protest, rather than having them find out over social media. All right, time for some...